she went out and had sex with her boyfriend and had a giant orgasm in a position she had never had an orgasm in before. This is Med Spa Mayhem, the podcast all about the chaotic world of medical aesthetics. From Botox to lasers to IV bars, learn how to tell real versus fake, legal versus illegal, and safe versus potentially deadly. Hear the crazy stories inside the med spa world and find out what questions to ask and how to spot the people cutting corners. I'm your host, Dr. Kate D. Together, we explore the wild west of medicine that is the aesthetics industry. Today, Dr. Judy Rubin and I explore everything you never knew about vaginal rejuvenation and why this is a hidden gem of a procedure that can help improve the lives of millions of women. Hi there, this is Dr. Kate D and I'm back with Dr. Judy Rubin. Thanks for being here today, Judy. Thank you so much. So today we are doing an episode that I am fondly labeling the Vagina Dialogues. We're going to talk about menopause, vaginal atrophy, and um, dryness, and other issues that are actually really well treated with a number of different kinds of treatments that we have at our practices and a number of places across the country. Uh, We would like to talk to you about all the different ways that these things work, uh, some of the things uh, that don't work, and all the crazy politics that exist around the vagina, apparently, in this country. So, Judy, which device do you have and what do you use it for? So I have a Mona Lisa Touch, which is a vaginal CO2 laser. It can also be used as a CO2 for the face. Uh, and a Temperature Vitalia, which is radio frequency, um, which can be used uh, in the vagina and the labia as well. The, the, CO, the Mona Lisa can also be used on the labia. Okay, excellent. And I have something called the Ultra Femme 360. It's also a radio frequency device that uses heat in order to uh, change the tissues of inside the vagina and then around the labia as well. So uh, there are a number of other devices that are out there that have other names. The very first one that I ever heard of was called Thermi Va. Uh, It was, I think, the first RF device that came out um, that that used a wand um, to treat the the vaginal walls. Uh, The one I have has a uh, 360-degree RF energy that goes out, so it's a little easier to do than the Thermi was. So what are all the things that you can treat with these devices? So we use Mona Lisa a lot for patients who have or are in menopause and have vaginal dryness, vaginal atrophy. Um, we use it for patients who have breast cancer and or had breast cancer and can't take any hormones, uh, who again have vaginal atrophy. Um, we, use it to, we use it to treat urge incontinence, which is you feel like you have to urinate all the time, even if you urinated five minutes ago. And we also treat it use it to treat stress incontinence, which is if you lift something heavy or you sneeze or you cough or you bear down that you leak some urine. Yeah, a lot of uh, patients and friends have said that ever since they had their kid, they um, leak a little like when they're running or doing jumping jacks or things like that. So it's very handy to be able to treat that. I think just post-childbirth is probably the most common thing that we treat is a little bit of dribbling post-childbirth. Yeah. It's a great alternative to surgery. I've had several patients who have had surgery for stress incontinence, and it didn't work. And then they come in, and they have a series of three Mona Lisa, and their incontinence is gone. It should be done before surgery. Surgery should be the last option as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and and we have found the same thing, that we do a series of, of three treatments, and... When dribbling is kind of mild to moderate, it really responds really well. And absolutely, surgery should be a last resort um, rather than going straight to that. Um, I would say probably uh, that 
this kind of treatment is superior to, to surgery, if it works for you, then you can avoid something way bigger. Yes. So we find that also it increases lubrication. So um, if there's dryness and pain with intercourse, it actually makes that much you know, easier and better and eliminates pain on intercourse. Yeah, I um, think it saves marriages. <laughs> as, as people become menopausal, they, the, the cells that line the vagina become flat and they're not distensible. And so sex becomes painful. Uh, and I think that sometimes their partner goes elsewhere because they can't mm. have sex with their partner. And if you do a simple radio frequency or Mona Lisa CO2 for the vagina, the vagina becomes normal again and distensible. And I always measure everyone's, the depth of the vagina. And when we start, it's normally eight and a half centimeters. When we finish, it's 12 centimeters because the vagina now stretches. Yeah, we had a patient who um, had very severe dryness, hadn't been able to have sex with her husband for several years. And she had one treatment. And when she came in for the second treatment, she was crying because she had had sex with her husband for the first time in many years and it didn't hurt. It was pleasurable and he was happy and she was happy and it had completely changed her life. Absolutely. I think it's the most rewarding thing we do in our practice. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That, that's really awesome. We um, originally, when all this started, Back, I want to say 2017, 18 was when the big wave of interest in this kind of treatment uh, came out. There was a lot of discussion about just the appearance of the labia and what it looked like and trying to tighten things up. Do you do that in your practice as well? We have a few patients who want to have labial tightening and we use the radio frequency <laughs> for that. Um, it does help, but I would say that you can't have extreme laxity and see a huge difference. It has to be just a small change. Uh, but as you get older, the, the labia um, start to you know, thin out and not be as tight as they were before. And it will help somewhat. It's not phenomenal, but it will help somewhat. Yeah. And we've found exactly the same thing. We really don't do the procedure primarily for that purpose, but we do find that everything's a little bit tighter afterwards. The tightness inside is something that not only can the patient feel, but the, the if they have a male partner, the partner can feel it. It actually feels different, which is kind of remarkable. But what I'm really talking about here is just the appearance of the labia on the outside. It, it tends to get stretched out and a little loose, especially after childbearing, but um, that all gets a little tighter. It's not dramatic. It's not like a labiaplasty, but it does you know, get a little bit tighter. It can help a little bit, but we tend to just get that as kind of a side benefit. We're not really doing it for that purpose very much. I don't think that we have really ever had somebody walk in the door saying, I want my vagina to be prettier. Um, but maybe you have, have you had anyone who actually walked in the door asking for that? One or two, but very few. I mean, primarily we're treating people who have a medical condition. They have vaginal atrophy <laughs> because they're in menopause or because they've had breast cancer. And it, this absolutely turns that around. Uh, it saves their marriage and it makes them far more comfortable walking around on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, and I, I agree. We've seen many, many patients who, who've had that same kind of benefit. Um, I myself, so I will o overshare here. So I have twins who are now in college, but uh, when I got this machine, they were about 13 years old. And Ever since my twins were born, I had this mild dribbling. It wasn't terrible. It just was a little bit here and there. So when I got the device, I had it and then the dribbling went away. And I even, you know, we typically advise people that the results you get from radio frequency treatment are temporary. You do need to do it again to maintain your results. And I had one maintenance session a year later, and I really haven't had anything since then. And I, that dribbling never did return. So I thought it was pretty amazing for me. Um, and then we had another patient who, I will kid you not, uh, she was one of the first people we did after her first session. 
she literally called us the next day and told us that she went out and had sex with her boyfriend and had a giant orgasm in the position she had never had an orgasm in before. And she was literally calling us to tell us how happy she was about that. Mm -hmm. And again, like when I, when I do consults and I tell people about this thing, I'm like, your mileage will vary. And I can't promise you that you're going to suddenly have amazing orgasms in a new way. But I, I really couldn't believe how dramatic the results were for people when we started doing this. Yeah. I have, um, this, I have one patient who hadn't had sex for 20 years. She had breast cancer. She had been on estrogen blockers. Um, she had severe vaginal atrophy and her vagina was actually, it was a slit a cut at six o'clock at the bottom and she was bleeding every day. Wow. Uh, and no one would offer her any treatment whatsoever. <clears throat> we did three Mona Lisa's on her, and now she is completely and totally fine. It, wow. It really is the single most rewarding thing that we do. We help women in menopause. And so many times you go to the doctor and you tell them what's going on, and they're like, you know, you're getting old. There's nothing we can do. And this is a very good procedure for patients who have vaginal atrophy. Yeah, well, I, I kind of wanted to share how I landed in this arena because I am not a GYN. I'm not a, any kind of specialist. I am a, I, you know, I was before doing aesthetics, a breast cancer specialist, but um, we, we were not doing vaginas. Okay. And, and I was focused on skin and skincare. And what happened for me was I was at a meeting, a big conference, and vaginal rejuvenation was just starting as a big exploding uh, topic and, and part of segment of, of the med spa world. And I literally was in a giant auditorium with a live demo of vaginal rejuvenation happening with that original device, the Thermiva. So the patient was behind a curtain. And <laughs> so you couldn't see her, but you could, there was a camera kind of focused on the site of action and you could see what was being done. And then, and you know, there's hundreds of people in the audience and it was brand new and everybody was like ooing and eyeing. And I was like, I cannot believe that I'm watching this right now. <laughs> and the person next to me was actually a master esthetician from my state who said, oh yes, we just got one of these. I love doing them. It's fantastic. It totally works. And I'm like, really? I'm like, that is so not going to happen. I'm not doing this. And then what happened for me was I had a device that was called Exilis Elite back in the day. I think I bought that machine in 2015 or something. Um, and a few years later, what they did was they did an upgrade of the Exilis machine to add ultrasound to it. Um, and if I got the upgrade, it was going to cost me however much for the upgrade, but I was going to get a new, basically a new device, a new warranty, and they were adding this vaginal rejuvenation capability to it. And so I'm like, ha, huh, do I really want to do that? It was a bunch of money. It was like, well, I don't know if I really want to get into the vagina business. And so I had a staff meeting and I talked about it and there wasn't a ton of research back then. There was some supporting it, right? Um, and I just, I was like, so if we get this machine, are you guys going to be into it? Are you going to want to do this? Are, are you going to want to perform it, talk about it? Because then we'll all of a sudden be doing vaginas, right? And my staff was super enthusiastic. Everybody wanted it. My master estheticians were already doing kind of uh, Brazilian laser hair removal. They're like, we're down in that area anyway. We don't mind. It'll be fine. Everybody wanted to try it. So we ended up doing the upgrade and we um, did, a, you know, the, our first few patients as part of the training. And we all kind of, you know, volunteered for it. And every single staff member I have had it done and loved it and it improved their lives and it we all did it and we were like, oh my God, this, this is, this really does work. And, and, um, so that's kind of how we ended up doing it. It really wasn't something I was seeking out. So how, how about you? It sounds like you were way more directed and wanted to do this because you knew it was going to be great. 
Yeah, well, my passion in life, one of my passions in life is treating women who are in menopause with hormone replacement therapy that is safe and doing research on um, the safety and efficacy of hormone replacement therapy. I wrote a randomized clinical trial on bioidentical hormones versus standard therapy. So, and, and I did one year of training as an OBGYN. As a family doctor, I did a lot of GYN and still did OB and delivered babies. So this has been my interest for a long time. Um, and I started going on, on PubMed and looking for treatments for vaginal atrophy because besides estrogen, you know, I didn't know of any other treatment. And lo and behold, there's a lot of medical articles, peer review articles published in various peer review mm. journals um, that talk about vaginal CO2 and vaginal radiofrequency. Uh, and the conclusion was that it works and it doesn't hurt. That's like a really important point is that you th would think that this would hurt, but it doesn't. So I went for my training in Beverly Hills um, with Dr. Weiss, who's an OBGYN in Beverly Hills. And there were three people who were supposed to have the Mona Lisa and two showed up and the third did not. So he said to me, would you like this? I'm like, sure. And even though I asked both of the patients who went before me if it hurt and they looked like they were completely comfortable, I was still afraid until he started the treatment and it <clears throat> feels like a vibrator. It does not hurt at all. But like you, I had some, I had urge incontinence. So I just felt like I had to pee all the time. And it completely took it away with one treatment. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah the the radio frequency uh, devices that use heat also do not hurt. Um, you actually have no temperature sensation at all inside the vagina. So you can't really feel much at all for that part. Um, on the outside, you do. You can feel heat there. And it feels pretty warm, but it's not unpleasant. It's not too hot at all. So it's very, very well tolerated. Um, have you ever had a complication from Mona Lisa Touch? Never. Yeah. And I've we have so many. Yes. And we've never have either. Um, it, we have not had a single uh, complaint ever um, about any kind of burn, any kind of issue, nothing. So let, let's talk a little bit about what happened because at some point I, I can't remember the exact year. I think it might've been 2019 when the FDA came out with a warning about all the vaginal rejuvenation devices. What happened was, uh, even though there were no complications, no burns, nothing like that, the the companies that made these devices never got FDA clearance or approval for use in the vagina. They were using lasers and RF devices that had been FDA cleared for the skin, and they turned around and used those for vaginal tissue without validating with the FDA. There have been tons of studies, actually, but the companies that make the machines never did the required studies to submit to the FDA to get FDA clearance to treat vaginas, okay? So um, what happened was all these companies that make those devices could no longer market the devices to the doctors who were buying them. And all of a sudden, the entire industry basically imploded. And so. As a physician, you and I as physicians can use any device off-label and use it for a different purpose. So we can take a device that's meant for the skin and use it for something else that's legal. And there's nothing unethical or wrong about it. So the fact that we've seen amazing results and the fact that we're still doing it, that's totally fine. There's, there's no problem. The problem is in marketing. So the companies that make these devices uh, that we need them to make the devices in order to keep doing the procedure because sooner or later your device needs maintenance, it needs upgrades, it needs replacement parts or tips. And and if that company is no longer making them, then that eventually will will stop. And so actually for the device I use, because it's used for skin tightening and stuff, the company still makes the vaginal tips. I assume that there's the same thing for you and the devices that you use. Yeah, the company still makes the vaginal tips for the radio frequency. 
and there's no consumable on Mona Lisa. So we autoclave them and they're made out of surgical steel and we use them over and over again. Uh, and they are still servicing the machine and I hope that they continue to do that forever. Yeah. Well, if it's a CO2 and it can be used on skin, then there's no reason for them not to yeah. continue making that. Right. Um, so, but the problem is that the, the industry that had started to supply these procedures to help women, um, basically stopped and, and the, the number of places that could buy those machines, I mean, basically you couldn't buy a new machine, I, although I, I'm sure you can still buy a, a Mona Lisa. Yeah. Um, but it really was, was, um, detrimental to the, the business in general. And the other big uh, impediment, as far as I'm concerned, is you cannot advertise any of this stuff on Facebook or Google. The yeah, moment you say the, the word vagina, yeah, the moment you say the word vagina, they shut you down. They won't, they'll say, sorry, it's, you know, it not, the content is not allowed. As a matter of fact, uh, when, when I was naming this podcast, The Vagina Dialogue, <laughs> After, of course, the vagina monologues, which if you haven't seen, you should absolutely go out and see. It's a fantastic uh, show. But um, I was a little worried, you know, actually, well, I guess we'll find out once I yeah. get this up um, on all the platforms, if the the platforms would be upset about the word vagina in the podcast title. So I don't know. Uh, we'll we'll find out. If you're listening to this, that means it still was allowed. So, um but yeah, and so that really makes it really hard to get the word out uh, that this kind of procedure exists and it's super helpful. It makes it really hard for people who need it to find it. And that's right. the biggest shame is that so many patients would benefit from it and we can't get to them. We can't spread the word. Yeah, and and if... Uh, if you're ever interested in doing medical research rather than asking Dr. Google, um, if you go to PubMed, so we doctors use this all the time, but it'd be great if everybody knew about PubMed. PubMed is kind of like the uh, Google for scientific research. And so if you really want to find out what treatments work, you go to PubMed and you can actually read all of the studies that support this procedure and then anything else that you're interested in, it's yeah. going to be way more accurate than, than looking at Google results yeah. because Google gives you all kinds of things that aren't actually true. And if you like to read, there's 407, ran, 407 peer review articles on vaginal CO2 laser. So quite a few. Yeah, there, there have been many, many articles. And actually, that has been many years since the FDA did this. As far as I know, there hasn't been an update on the FDA and its opinion on vaginal reju rejuvenation, but there have been many, many further studies and meta-analyses of all those studies that shows that it not only is effective, but it's very, very safe. Um, there really have been uh, very few ever reported negative consequences from having one of these procedures. Talk about all right. Billing. Talk about billing. Talk about billing. Okay, let's let's talk about this. So, how much does this procedure cost, and is does insurance ever cover it? Insurance um, does not cover it, and I really think it's a shame. So, um, there is no CPT code for CO two laser, vaginal CO two laser, or for vaginal radio frequency. So, the way that doctors bill for their services is they submit the procedure code, which is the CPT code, with a diagnosis, which is an ICD 10 code. And so, patients will come in and ask if they can submit it to their insurance. And I have no way of giving them a procedure code. I try, it never gets paid for, um, but it should be. Yeah. So, there are many procedures that do not have an approved code. And in order to have your, you know, any, any kind of metamedical procedure covered by insurance or Medicare, it has to go through a procedure where uh, data is submitted to CMS, which is basically Medicare. And basically there's actually a lot of, besides studies, there's a lot of money that goes into that lobbying in order to get an approved code for your procedure. 
Um, so for example, in the past, you know, everybody used to get screened with colonoscopy, right? That was the standard. And then back, this is ages ago, this will date me. We were doing um, a procedure called CT colonography, where we would take a CT scan basically and coat it with contrast. And we were able to actually look at your whole colon without having to stick a scope up your bottom. So when this was being developed, we were really excited thinking that this was going to replace colonoscopy as a screening tool. Now you're not there, so you can't do um, biopsies. But for the people who have a clean colon, they don't need to have a scope stuck up in there. It's much easier to do. It's much lower impact on the patient. But anyway, huge lobbying by the gastroenterologist to prevent this from happening because this was their bread and butter. And it did not ever get the code. So it never really caught on um, and never replaced colonoscopy. But it, you know, so it was a promising idea and it could still be done, but it wasn't going to be paid for by CMS and therefore not going to be paid for by insurance. And so now we have various things where it's actually treating a medical condition, right? So a lot of people with urinary incontinence and whatever, ironically, they will pay for surgery, <laughs> um, which is way more expensive than, than, than vaginal rejuvenation, but they, they will not pay for these treatments. And that is really a shame. And I, I, I honestly, like one of the big things, and I, I do talk about this in uh, my book. So in case you haven't read the book yet, that's Bob Mayhem coming to June 11th. Um, but, uh, you know, the company that makes the device or created the procedure or whatever, you have to go through massive amounts and it's very, very expensive, but massive amounts of research and, and lobbying and effort to not only get FDA approval, but actually get re argue for reimbursement for a procedure. And if it's, if it doesn't pencil out for them, they won't do it. And that is really a shame. So we have a system where there are all kinds of things that are just not covered because it, someone's not going to make money off of it. Um, so then, or you know, someone's going to lose money off of it, like, <laughs> the CT, like the CT calcium score, which should be a screening exam that everyone has. And if you go to the ER and you have chest pain, you should immediately have a CT calcium score because there's no CPT code for it. Right. Yeah. So, and again, so uh, if there's no money in it, people won't, won't, do, won't jump through those hoops. And so unfortunately, there is no reimbursement for vaginal rejuvenation. So if you really want to try it, you've got to just, you know, suck it up and pay the money and see if it works for you. And we're both here to say that, you know, we think it really works. It's worked for the vast majority of patients who've, who've done it. So, you know, we both believe in it. Of course, we both used it. We've, yeah. we've shared. Um, and, um, so I think it's, it's a really, it's a good procedure. I think that, um, I'm glad that it's still, that it, it still exists and we're still doing it. Uh, but it'd be great to get the word out that, that it actually is super helpful. Um, unfortunately it is not free and it is not covered by, by health insurance. Yeah. And, and don't take our word for it. Go to PubMed and put in vaginal CO2 laser or vaginal radio frequency and read the articles. Yeah. Read you'll find. Analysis. Yeah. There's a ton of data. And we were talking uh, earlier and trying to think, you know, do we know anyone who's out there scamming or doing anything untoward with these treatments? And as far as I know, the answer is no. I, ha I haven't seen anybody out there uh, making promises that are incorrect or or doing anything that's actually harmful for people. So it's one of the few topics we can talk about in the med spa world where I don't really think there's any scam going on. As a matter of fact, I think that if anything, the sad part is the lack of availability for the treatment of a lot of issues that affect women. Um, and unfortunately, uh, there are many of those. But for all these series of things that we've talked about, uh, dribbling, vaginal dryness, pain on intercourse, um, 
Reading. All of that can be really well treated. And so we hope that you will do your own research and and check it out. Um, so on that note, I really want to thank you, Judy, for coming back and talking about this topic. It's been really fun, really interesting. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I am extremely passionate about this topic and really like to help patients who have been turned away by their doctor. And I really appreciate your asking me to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Until next time. Bye. If you have a question or a crazy story of your own that you'd like to hear on MedSpa Mayhem, contact us through our website, medspamayhem.com, or check out our contact information in the liner notes. If you learned something today and like what we're doing, please give us a five-star rating and read the book. MedSpa Mayhem is coming out June 11th, 2024. The link to pre-order is available on medspamayhem.com. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion about vaginal rejuvenation and the different ways it can help deal with very common problems. We hope it's been helpful and informative. Time to kick back with a glass of wine and Google where you can find this procedure near you. We'll be back next week with a fun topic, all the great things you can do with platelet-rich plasma, or PRP. Until then, have a great week. This has been Med Spa Mayhem with Dr. Kate D. We are so grateful you are listening and we hope you have learned at least one fun or possibly disturbing fact today. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Oh, and read the book. Med Spa Mayhem comes out June 2024, available everywhere books are sold. You can pre-order now on Amazon and Barnes & Noble and soon on bookshop.org. Links and more can be found on medspamayhem.com.